Okay, so we're done with uh, a description of motion. I hope you understand that. So let's go to um, displacement and time. Okay, so this is the second discussion for, for this course. We have displacement and time. So as I said, Kanina, um, you should have a, a, a coordinate system first set up before you define your position. So the position of an object is, is described by a vector that points from a common reference point. A common reference point is something that we all agreed upon or something that's agreed upon. So dito nag start yung origin mo. And your origin is part of your coordinate system. Hence, this is consistent with our analysis that, hi Rene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for example, you have an origin of the coordinate system, and then you define this point here, point is 1, 1, so the coordinates of point P is 1, 1, and hence, in this particular case, uh, the position of this vector is I hat plus J hat. Remember your unit vectors, right? So I can define my unit vectors relative to point O, which is now defined to be my coordinate system, or the origin of my coordinate system. So, yon. So say our location is again at point one one. Then the vector, the position of this point P in this particular coordinate system is one is i hat plus j hat. Again, you define a vector from the origin towards this point. Okay, that's the position vector. Okay, so for one, di medyo mas simple lang kasi kailangan mo lang isipin isang unit vector which is i hat. But when you go to two D and three D after some time, maybe next week, then uh, dun na lumalabas yung i hat and j hat components and possibly k hat components. Okay? Is there any question? Are there any questions? May None. mga tanong ba? Ah, okay. Sige. Now, so, um, of course, it's possible na yung particle, since we are dealing with motion of bodies, it's possible that the particle moves from one position to another. Diba? So, in that case, if um, a particle moves from, let's say, point P1 to, say, point P2, like this in this diagram. In that case, the, uh, the vector difference of uh, the positions from P1, uh, from P1 to P2 is what's known as your displacement. So um, the displacement of a vector is a vector that points from the object's initial position to its final position. That's delta x vector is x2 vector minus x1 vector. So for one, di hindi gan kasi hindi gan ka, ka hirap yung um, magnitude ng displacement vector. Basically, difference lang din siya ng mga lengths ng mga vectors for 1D. But for 2D and 3D, this becomes more different. So medyo masagiging slightly more complicated yung ating definition ng displacement. So, okay? Questions. So, may tanong ba? So again, a displacement is that vector but point, points from initial position to some final position. Hindi usually involved ang origin sa displacement. But of course, if you know your, uh, since both vectors, the initial and the final position of the object is with respect to the origin of your coordinate system, merjo may indirect involvement si origin dito sa definition na. So, okay? Questions? So, may questions ba? None, so far. None. Okay. Again, as I said, these are all definitions. <laughs> alam na alam yun na to. <laughs> okay. So now, of course, you also have the our notion of distance. So what's the difference between displacement and distance? Of course, the obvious answer is that well, displacement is a uh, is a vector, while distance is uh, a scalar. But for example, here, um, p one for a particle moves uh, along this path here, but returns to its original position. Since what? Since uh, the displacement, uh, why is the displacement zero here? Obviously, because it returned to its original position. Therefore, by definition, since um, the initial and the final positions are the same, then the displacement vanishes. So, however, since we know that it already traveled along uh, along this curve here, we say that the distance traveled by this point by this particle is non-zero. Okay. And therefore, we can say that the distance is the total length of the path taken, which is a scalar, whereas a displacement only depends on the starting and final positions of the particle. So it doesn't matter how uh, what path does the uh, particle took, what the, the particle taken, the, sorry, the path taken by the particle does import. It's not important. But the only thing that's important here is the initial and the final positions of, um, of the particle. Okay, again, distance is a scalar, displacement is a vector. Huwag kakalimutan yan. Okay, questions? May tanong ba? 
May tanong ba rito? And so far. Man, thank you. So, now, so we're done with displacement and distance. So, let's go to time. So, we, alam nyo, to be honest, time is a really difficult uh, topic to be defined. In fact, when you go to, for example, a dictionary, ang haba-haba ng entries ng time dyan. Uh, ang dami pwede gamitin pang define ng time. So, instead of defining what time is, huwag na natin isipin yung sarili natin what time is exactly. We can only uh, say that uh, there's there's this thing called time interval, which specifies the initial and the final time where the motion is observed. So, let's, for example, here, time states when and how long the motion occurs. That's in our uh, in our context, and importante lang sa atin sa definition ng time is kailan nag-start at kailan nag-end yung motion na in-observe natin. Yun lang importante sa atin ngayon. About the nature of time, huwag muna natin isipin. Okay, so time, it's again an important scalar quantity that describes motion. We, we know that because... Um, uh, everything uh, moves in time. So it used uh, to refer a specific time and object is at a particular point. So again, uh, you'll start your time when the particle starts moving, for example. So for exa usually naman sa mga examples natin, uh, the particle is initially at rest. So at time t equals zero, hindi pa gumagalaw yung particle, then bigla siyang gagalaw once na t equals zero na. And it's t equals zero, so we set that t equals zero based on, uh, based on the problem. Okay, so... The time interval is defined as just change in time, t to minus t1. This is only the thing that's important for us now. So, important lang sa atin kung um, kailan nag-start at kailan nag-end yung motion ng isang object. And you can measure it through time, through calculating the time interval, delta t. Okay? Questions? So, may tanong ba rito? Uh, wala po, sir. Wala. 